Friends, welcome to my workplace for hands-on FACO and SICS training. This is a hypermature Morgagnian cataract. Let us observe this surgery. The ocular surface is thoroughly irrigated, applying few drops of 5% povidone iodine. Now the main incision is made with 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. A side port is made on the left side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away. And now the anterior capsule is stained with tripan blue dye underneath this air bubble. When we apply dye underneath an air bubble, the staining is very quick. It takes only 10 to 15 seconds for staining the anterior capsule. Adrenaline is used to maintain the dilatation of the pupil. The dye is washed out using BSS. If we wash the dye out, there is uniform staining all around and visibility becomes better. The antechamber is then filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. A 26 gauze band needle assistidome is used to make a C flap. A small erexis is made with the help of uh, uterata forceps. In this case, there was no leakage of any milky fluid or any oily fluid, but still, there is some convexity of the anterior surface. And it is always safer to use small rixes to aspirate some lens matter, decrease the intralenticular pressure, and then enlarge the mini rixes into an optimum sized one. Visco is used to fill up the anterior chamber again. A nick is made at the margin of the mini rixes with a vana scissor. The uterata forceps is used again to enlarge this mini rexis into an optimum size rexis of about 5.25 millimeter. When the intralenticular pressure is reduced by aspirating some lens matter, there is no tendency of the capsule to run to periphery and we can easily do are excess of optimum size. And now, now is the time to introduce the FECO handpiece. The machine being used is Faro's from Oatley, Switzerland. The microscope is OMS 800 from Topcon, Japan. In this case, I am going to use direct vertical job for nuclear division. The nucleus is brittle in this case and it is getting easily divided into pieces. The ultrasonic energy is 60 percent, flow rate is 45 ml per minute, vacuum is 450 millimeter a millimeter of mercury. This is the other hemonucleus, it is divided into two pieces and the larger pieces are subdivided into smaller pieces and they are easily emulsified. During emulsification of the last piece, the vacuum is reduced further to about 300 millimeter of mercury and flow rate to about 30. All the small nuclear bits have come out through the side port and now a lot of cortex is there in this case. I am going to use a 23 gauze Simcoe cannula for removal of this cortex. The cortex is coming very easily.
to remove the sub incisional cortex, I go through the side port. The side port is little large, it is about 1.8 millimeter. The main incision is 2.8 millimeter. So, astigmatism produced by the main wound has been reduced to some extent by the side port because the side port is placed at a 90 degree away from the main wound. Now, this is hydroimplantation of a single piece monofocal intraocular lens. By a push of the left hand instrument, the trailing haptic goes into the capsular bag. The lens is dialed. The advantage of hydroimplantation is we do not have to spend a lot of time now to remove the visco. Whatever little visco is there in the lumen of the cartridge comes out just by irrigation. And I do always a final lavage of the anterior chamber and this reduces TAS, toxic anterior segment syndrome. The anterior chamber is nicely formed. Integrity of all the wounds are checked with a cotton tipped injunction bar, and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy, and great surgical competence.